so as I was saying this over here is a function it is actually the main function which every C++ program must have this is where stuff actually gets executed and done anything that's outside a function is probably stuff that is being pr prepared and uh, and uh, set up to get ready for the real stuff which is happening inside of a function and the way how a function is actually made we're going to learn that later on why what's int what's the name what's the parentheses but basically just think of it that this package over here called a function begins with the opening brace and the closing brace and everything inside of it gets executed one after the other. So here's how our program starts. See out this stuff hello world semicolon. See out is a keyword which was invented. It's not one of the basic C++ keywords. It is invented by programmers and it is in this file over here IO stream. That is where the programmers put this keyword C out. Actually C out is inside the package STD which is in the file IO stream. So in order to, in order to use this keyword C out we need to tell the compiler to first of all include the file IO stream and then ask permission to use the stuff that is in the package STD which is in this file IO stream. So what does this C out thing do? Well, without going into many details, let's just say it's a piece of magic that uh, takes anything that is after these two triangular brackets and prints it on the screen inside of your uh, program's window. These two triangular brackets over here is also required uh, when you're using this C out thingy. And since we'd like to put out some text, the way we display text is we enclose it inside of quotes. So here's the opening quotes, here's the closing quotes, anything inside over here, any text we put, it could be hello world, it could be anything else, everything is going to be treated as regular text, which is going to be printed out in the console's window. Of course, printing means showing stuff in the window, it doesn't only mean printing paper from your printer. And then we have a semicolon. Actually, over here also we had a semicolon. Most of the stuff in C++, most, most of the commands in C++ must finish with a semicolon. There are very few stuff in C++ which does not finish with a semicolon. A function, as you see over here, this function, the main function, doesn't finish with a semicolon. Um, including something, using the preprocessor, doesn't have to finish with a semicolon. Uh, but otherwise, most of the stuff has to finish with a semicolon. So every command really, like this is a command, put this stuff on the screen. So it, if the command is over, that's it. This is all there is to this command. So you have to finish it off with a semicolon. Over here is another command. Finish it off with a semicolon. Another command, another semicolon. Every command gets finished with a semicolon. Now let's talk a little bit about the spacing over here in C++. A C++ compiler uh, never minds about how you space out your code. Um, words have to be separated. Um, so like you can't have using a namespace uh, stuck together like that. It's not going to be recognized as a keyword. You have to separate them by a space. But otherwise you could uh, pretty much space out your stuff however you'd like. You can even have everything in one single line and the compiler will still understand everything that's going on. Actually this is not true with preprocessor commands. Preprocessor commands must have their own line for each of their commands. But after that, like when we start getting into real C++ code with semicolons and stuff like that, you can have your whole entire code in one single line and the compiler will understand what's going on. So the compiler really doesn't mind how you space out your stuff, um, but programmers do. 
So make sure that you space out your code in a way that's very clear and understandable. Uh, things are organized in a way which is clear to other programmers what's going on. So programmers like to have one command per line, uh, basically one phrase, so to speak, which finishes with a semicolon per line. So here we have one command, one command, one line, another command, another line. Also, stuff which is enclosed inside braces, many uh, programmers like to have them all indented, meaning that we don't like to have them everything on the same level over here which could get confusing. One way to make things a little bit clearer is to have everything within braces indented by one tab so that we know exactly what is inside this function. So it'll take a little time to notice exactly what can make a difference and what doesn't make a difference with uh, spaces and uh, the enter key. Like uh, we said over there, you can't have two keywords stuck together However, over here, you could have C out, and then these two things, and then all of this stuff all stuck together. So, it'll take a while to pick up exactly what could be together and what um, white space uh, makes a difference. And we'll pick that up as we go along. The next line over here, CIN get, is also a special keyword which was invented and programmed in this IOStream file and was also inside of this package std. What this uh, command does is that, uh, we says, as I said in the previous video, that, uh, actually I think a different video, uh, that this makes the program wait until uh, the user of the program will type something in and press enter. That's what this line over here does. An important thing about C++ is case, sensi case sensitivity. The C++ compiler will recognize the difference between uppercase and lowercase. And you better make sure that you spell everything correctly for the compiler to recognize the stuff. Like if I would type over here the same word but just with uppercase letters, um, I will get a compiler error saying uh, this thing over here is not recognized. And that's true because no one ever mentioned what exactly is this thing with a uppercase C. We did know, we did learn what's CIN with a lowercase C that's in the file IO stream, which we included earlier, but we don't know what it is with a uppercase C. So C++ is sensitive to uh, uppercase or lowercase. So make sure you spell everything correctly um, actually most of the stuff, most of the main basic keywords in C++ are all in lower s lower case. So make sure you spell that all correctly with the correct uh, 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 case sensitivity, uppercase or lowercase. And finally over here we have return zero. Return basically means uh, the function is done, we're ready to uh, return, which basically means stop uh, this function, finish this function, and go back to whatever was happening before, which basically means uh, going back to the computer or whatever you were doing. Uh, the reason why we have a zero, well, we'll get into that later on. It has something what to do with this INT thing, and we'll talk about that some other time. You could really put any number you'd like over here, one or two, or three or whatever, but just make sure you have some number over here. Uh, without any number, you're going to have a compiler error. So let's review. Over here we included a header file. A header file will not be compiled if it's not included in a CPP file, which is a source file. Then we included the IO stream file, which is stuff which programmers made useful, which we could use. Then we are asking, so to speak, permission to use stuff in the std package, which is in the IO stream file. Then we are starting our main function, which every C++ program must have. We are printing some text on the screen. And then we are waiting for the user to type something in and press enter. And then we are finishing our function and returning to whatever was happening before.